Great. Never gets old. No, I can't get over it. It I never gets old. It's uh, it's uh, it's Ooh. the sweetest pump me up. Yeah, that little that little woo in the end does it. Yeah, uh, gives me shivers. So cool. All right. So we already got a couple people on here. Uh, so I am with the infamous, famous, notorious, amazing, glorious, <laughs> outstanding Joe Rosen. And uh, you know, this is a really cool episode here today because. You know, we, we, we talk a lot about there about, you know, pay-per-click ads and Facebook ads and, you know, writing postcards and all that kind of stuff, which a lot of, all of it works. Let's put it that way. All of it works if you understand what your uh, conversion ratios are and that kind of thing, what to expect. And Joe's really big on, uh, on tracking. So we don't really need to track numbers here other than Joe has basically created a, a massive amount of influence. He's created an audience, all right? So if anybody knows of uh, the Gary V out there, if anybody knows of Gary V, uh, yeah, Joe is a Man. huge fan. I'm a huge fan as well. Uh, wrote a couple of famous uh, New York best time, uh, New York Times bestsellers. And uh, Gary V was really all about, was really the pioneer, I would say, of you know understanding how Facebook can really uh, dramatically affect your influence, whether you're influencing to sell widgets, real estate, or you're influencing, you know, you want people to look at you as a model or whatever it is, you want to capture influence. And that's what basically Joe has done. And Joe has done it. We're going to have a tag down here that he's done it organically. Uh, for the use, those of you out there, uh, I didn't understand that, but uh, organically is free. So, um, you know, it's free is, you know, a, a very uh, notorious term out there. Uh, it takes your time. It takes your effort. It takes your uh, learning something new. So if you look at your time as valuable and, and having money, it's not free, but it certainly isn't something that you outlay money for. So if you're an agent out there that doesn't have any money, that doesn't have uh, an advertising budget even, or maybe you have enough money, but you don't have an advertising budget, uh, Joe basically created this massive audience uh, before he even came down to Florida. So nobody knew who Joe Rosen was uh, last this time last year or a little bit before that, January of, of 2020, 2019, he came. I met Joe at the end of 2019. And um, nobody knew him. And now everybody knows who Joe Rosen is. And Joe Rosen has not paid $1, right, Joe, for a Facebook ad. He has done it all. I might have paid a little bit now, but for the most part, no, I haven't paid any money. Oh, that's the first time you're telling me that. But anyways, for the majority of your influence, it's been created with, uh, I think you do some stuff with grand, not personal stuff, right? So anyways, so his personal brand and the Joe Rosen show has all been generated by his efforts. And he's going to show you and tell you the strategies of how he has created this massive audience here and now. So there you go, Joe. There's your intro. Man, that's a heck of an intro. I really appreciate it. And I'll tell you, just to, to go off of, you, you know, I have pumped a little bit of money and you cannot put money into your personal page, right? So I put $0 into that. The money I've put into my business page has not been nearly, 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 nearly as successful for me as the time I've invested organically in my personal page. So I'm going to talk to uh, a lot about that. I want to start with this, right? Just, just a couple things that Alex had mentioned that I want to piggyback off of. Number one, it's a huge, 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 I don't know if I'd say motto, but something that I really focus on uh, in that you need to focus on getting comfortable being uncomfortable. All right. So a lot of the stuff I'm going to say, everybody is going to say, great idea, Joe. I love that idea. That's a good idea. Everybody's going to say that, but 10% are going to implement it. 10% are going to execute on it. And some of it's laziness. Some of it is just, I'm uncomfortable. I don't know if I look good on camera. Guys, I'm a bald-headed, chubby 39-year-old. You'll look fine, right? Just get out there and do it. You'll be absolutely fine. It's not a big deal. And you're going to fail at first. You're going to look horrible. You're going to stutter over your words. And I'm telling you, just like cold calling, we talk about cold calling, right? Everybody sucks on month one. The more you do it and the faster you fail, the more reps you get, the better you're going to get. So just do it. Just do it, do it, do it. Or 
become part of the 87% that fail out every five years. The 13% that succeed are the 13% that get comfortable being uncomfortable. So just do it, right? No excuses. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, I want to touch on him a little bit because he had such a huge part in how I really honed in on my vision for what it was I wanted to do with my social media. Uh, he had a great book called Crush It, which is really a motivational book about just getting up and having passion behind what you do, right? But his book, Jab, 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 Right Hook, is really what built my YouTube channel, The Joe Rosen Show. And it's really been a huge influence on what I do on Instagram and on Facebook. I think a lot of agents just instinctively want to post a picture of their new listing and say, hey, I got a new listing. They want to post a picture of their open house and say, hey, guys, noon to three on Saturday, come visit me. Uh, but that's really not that interesting. It's really not that valuable. It really, unless I, I don't have a realtor, but I am a really interested buyer, which most interested buyers have realtors. Uh, and most people aren't buyers, right? 90, 95% of the people that are watching you are not buying or selling right now. So that stuff is not going to interest them. What it feels like is you want something from me. You want to make a commission from me and that's it. You're really not building rapport with me or anything like that. And you don't look unique when I compare you to every other agent in the market, right? So for that reason, I think Gary Vaynerchuk has some great points on how to build that rapport and build that audience that you truly want to build, right? So I've got a whole list of great things that I have implemented. Again, all of these things are not Joe Rosen specific. I've taken from different gurus and different people that I see who have found a lot of great success in this, and I'm just executing on mass scale, right? That's all I'm doing. If you guys have any questions, any comments, <clears throat> feel free to put them in the comments section and Candace will bring them up and, and I'll respond to everything you got. So just bring it up whenever you got. Okay. So first of all, posts are like advertisements, right? So if you think posting once a week is going to get you this business that you're looking for, I, man, holy smokes. That's like saying I'm a cold caller. How many calls did you make last week? Five. Cool. Maybe in three years you'll have somebody, right? Like you got to get out there. You got to be consistent. So I like throwing numbers out. I like making sure that everybody is on the same page as I am tangibly. So what I would suggest is throwing out at least, at least two posts every single day. Okay. Every single day you got two. If you're taking one or two days off a week, there are a plethora of different websites, different apps that you can use. Go in and you can pre-create all of those different posts you want. You can time them. So if you're taking Sundays off like I do, the post will still generate and it'll still go up on Sundays or Saturdays or whatever day it is you want to take off, right? So you can have those different websites and you can use those different strategies to still ensure that you're getting that constant visibility. People who are watching you are, are seeing your face every single day, all day. And when they come on, I hear it all the time. Joe, I feel like when I go to Facebook, it's just the Joe Rosen book, right? Which is awesome. That's what you want to see. The only way to create that is to post a lot. So I like to post at least twice a day and I'm shooting for 25 to 40 posts a week. Okay. So that might sound like a lot, but guys, these posts are not that tough. And I'm going to get into posts a little bit later. I'm actually going to pull up my Facebook account. I'll show you some of my most recent posts. We'll go through maybe 10, 15, 20 of my posts. I'll show you the why behind them, what I did to create them, and what I was thinking when I generated that post, right? Um, so I think it's also important to really get a sense of what you're trying to brand with yourself, okay? You can't be the luxury guy and the waterfront guy and the nice guy, and the aggressive guy, and like you can't be all of those things. If you try to be all of those things, people are going to forget everything about what you're trying to do, right? Hone in on one, maybe two things, and that's it. Be that. So for me, I am trying to push that I am the hardest working realtor in this area. There might be bigger sellers, there might be bigger promoters, there might be bigger whatever. I'm not pitching any of that. I am pitching nobody works harder than this guy. And then my secondary is I'm a nice guy. I want everybody to know if you're working with me, I'm just going to be a really nice guy. That's a huge part of sales for me is the fact that I'm not salesy. I'm an educator. I give you my, my opinion on different things, but whatever you want to do, do it. I'm going to be super nice to you and you can trust me. 
That has helped me get a lot of referrals. And it's also just made me a better person. It pushes me to focus on, hey, don't just pitch it, man, be it. And it pushes me to have that higher standard. So from a personal standpoint, I like that. You don't have to be the nicest guy. You can be whatever you want, but whatever it is, find those one or two things you're really trying to hone in on and be consistent in your marketing so that people start to feel it. I get people all the time that come up to me and they'll open with Joe Rosen, the hardest working realtor on the Treasure Coast. How you doing? They're getting it, right? Whatever I'm putting out, they're starting to feel it, but it's taken time. It's taken a massive amount of posts and in those massive amounts of posts, it takes a consistent message, okay? <clears throat> okay. We talked about the numbers. Guys, I'm telling you too, twice a day, 25 to 40 posts a week with anything we talk about. We've talked about cold calls. We'll talk about door knocking. We'll talk about uh, open houses, all these different strategies that we use to get lead generation going. You'll never be successful if you don't track it. And if you are successful, you won't even know what was successful when you look back at it, unless you have the tracking to go back and look at it. So with anything, I like to put numbers to it. Uh, so that way we've got a plan. And if that plan's not working, you adjust the plan and move forward. But you don't know it's working unless you track. So I can tell you right now from experience, when I tell my team, I want you to do 25 to 40, I usually will not push them to track it for the first month because I want them to see that while they feel like they were doing a bunch, they maybe did 15 posts a week on average. And they did not hit the 25 to 40. They think they did a lot, but when you don't track it and you don't see the numbers and it's not in front of you, you're not going to hit the goal, right? So let's hit a tangible goal. And the way we do it is by tracking. <clears throat> All right. So your posts need to spark interest, right? I'm going to talk a little bit about what it is I'm doing here. And then I'm going to pull up my account here in about three, four minutes and we can run through some of the posts that I've got. So to spark interest, the biggest thing I think you can do is add value, right? Educate people, give them some information for free. Be the person who comes in, makes their life better, and you're not asking anything in return for it. So when I started my YouTube channel, I would do the top three things buyers need to consider at a home inspection. And I'm trying to think of things that they might not have been taught before. <clears throat> things that are really helpful for them, right? The top five things sellers should ask their listing agent before they list. Man, is that helpful, right? So all of these different topics that I'm presenting are things that if they watch it, if they listen to it, if they see it, if they read it, it's going to be valuable to them and it costs them nothing. I'm only delivering value and I'm asking nothing in return, right? And that is really the premise of Gary Vaynerchuk's book, Jab, 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 Right Hook. Jab, Jab, Jab is give value. Give, 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 give. For the first six months, I put stuff out on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube while I was down here in Port St. Lucie. I didn't ask for business once. That's me jabbing. I'm just giving value, giving value, giving value. The right hook is you asking for business. And they say jab, 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 right hook on purpose, right? One, two, three times you're giving, one time you're asking. That doesn't have to be three to one. It can be 10 to one. It can be two to one. It can be anything in between. But the purpose of that whole title is to show you that giving needs to be the focus. Asking is a secondary thought. But as realtors, especially, right? But anybody in any business, you constantly want to ask for business because you're focused on growth, profits. How do I benefit from the relationship that I'm in with these people? But I'm telling you the best way to get the business going, the greediest thing you can do is be a giver. Be a giver, quit focusing on commissions, sales, listings, and just commit to the process of being an amazing giver. And it's astonishing how many connections and how much business you'll truly do, right? So that's a phenomenal book for anybody really trying to hone in on their Facebook, on their Instagram, on their YouTube skills, jab, 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 right hook. Okay, the second thing, other than value slash education, is just be kind, be supportive. I've really linked up with some phenomenal people, some phenomenal charities locally who I love. I love the intent. I love what they're doing for our communities, and I've supported them. I've supported them. I've thrown different parties. Uh, I've, I've raised money for different charities. I've connected them to people who can help them a heck of a lot more than I can because I can only do and give so much time and money, right? But I can connect them with other people and that's phenomenal for them. It's more helpful than whatever I can do, right? 
So that's really been important. Support them. Maybe just getting a post out there with their information is going to connect them to a big donor or somebody who owns a piece of land that they need. But that person who had the land had no idea that somebody needed it. And it fulfills a piece in them, which is giving. They want to give that land, but they want to give it to somebody they know is going to use it for something other than building a house on or making a profit off of. Here, they're giving to the community. That's awesome. Now I'm taking two people and I'm helping them fulfill their passion. That's awesome, right? So really focus on being kind and supportive. Uh, another big one is just be funny, right? How many times do you see, especially these high-end agents, and they just look stuffy? It does not look like it would be fun to go out and have a beer with them. And I've heard people say, I'm not calling this person. I'm not calling that person. I feel like they're so intimidating and they're off-putting. I don't feel a connection. Build that connection. Build that rapport. So in your posts, I really like to add family time. I like to let them see, hey, this is me with my girls. This is me with my wife. I'm a baseball card, card nerd. So a lot of times I'll put baseball posts up just to let them see this is the real Joe Rosen outside of work hours. I'm an actual person who you can actually connect with. Now, how many of my audience care about baseball cards? Probably six people, right? Out of the 5,000 friends I got. They don't give a damn about baseball cards, but what they do like is seeing that I have an interest in something, right? And they're like, oh my gosh, this guy is human. He doesn't just work 85 hours a week. So really build that rapport with people and what a great opportunity to do it, right? Uh, and then, yeah, the last thing I was talking about is who you are as a person. And I think I gave a great example of that with the baseball cards. <clears throat> Candace, if you can do a screen share here, what I wanna show is not just how I do those different things, but also how I mix the two. Sometimes just talking uh, about your family doesn't have to be just, holy smokes, we're going to get notifications galore, uh, isn't just having to focus on your family. You can also focus on uh, mixing in a little bit of business. So I'm going to show you that. So you can see right off the bat, right? This photo right here in the center is the photo that I use on all of my social media. That photo's on all my marketing, all my branding. It's in my email signature. It's everywhere. And the reason is, is I don't care where you are or what you're looking at. I want you to see that this big bald-headed dude right here equals Joe Rosen equals real estate, right? So it's consistent, all right? My backdrop is my amazing family because that's the other thing I want you to connect to me. I want you to see that I'm an actual person with an actual heart who actually has a family and loves them, right? This is... This is my number one priority. And there's no question, every client I have knows it. Every client I have knows I take Sundays off and I take 6 to 7 p.m. off to be with those three amazing ladies right there. And they love it. They love it. In fact, if I work until 6 o'clock, they'll tell me, Joe, we're done. We can talk again at 7. They know it and they respect it. <clears throat> so building that is awesome, right? Guys, I can't tell you how many people don't have this section filled out. Go in and tell people a little bit about you. I promise there are people who are interested. So go show them. Okay. Right here uh, is a speaking event that I did a couple weeks ago. Right. This was up in Pennsylvania. This is a great friend of mine. His name is Benny Fisher. He's got a phenomenal company, the Big Fish Contracting Company. He just took on another co owner, Rob. And they're doing incredible things. So I had the great opportunity to go up and speak with these people. I think he's building an incredible culture. And so I just, again, here's being kind and supportive. So I wrote, I couldn't be more proud of my friendship that I've built with Ben Fisher and all of his big fish at the Big Fish Contracting Company. I also gave a shout out to uh, the new guy, Rob Takei, right? So I've tagged them both. And I've also tagged the company, so now what do you think people who are seeing this do? They're going to go in and they're going to hit this. They're going to like it, right? They're going to go check out Benny Fisher, Rob. I also have a good shot of Rob and Benny sharing this. So now I'm getting even more uh, of their audience who are seeing my posts, okay? And look at this. In this post, we've got 25 others in, uh, in addition to David and Benny, who are on that post, they're going to see that I shared it, which makes them want to come in and interact with all this, right? So now let's come down to here. So this is me uh, advertising what we're doing right here. Here's another one I put up today. This is literally me just being kind. And then I branded the Rosen Group in EXP. 
<clears throat> you'll always find what you're looking for. Focus on others' flaws and you'll find failure abounds. Seek out others' greatness and all you'll see is endless potential. I'm not asking for any business there. I'm literally just putting some goodness out into the universe. That's it, right? People like that stuff. I put this up at what time? Two hours ago. We got six really awesome positive comments and a share. And I got 29 likes. And out of those 29 likes, 16 of them are hearts. 13s are thumbs up. There's probably better verbiage for it. But uh, yeah, that's some solid stuff, right? Here's a, This is a great one. Now, if I'd done a better job, I would have actually taken a photo with Megan to promote her, right? And again, guys, the focus should be the other person always. I'm telling you, for those of you who are like, well, Joe, I'm here to build my business. The greediest thing you can do is love up on others. I wish I got a picture of us, but I completely forgot I had coffee with Megan at 1971 this morning. Wow, she's a phenomenal realtor. Guys, not to mention the fact that she's not with EXP. I'm promoting somebody who's not even with my company just to show people I don't care. I just want to promote amazing people and the amazing things they're doing, right? I'm addicted to goals and she had some inspiring goals. Thank you, Megan, blah, 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 right? And then I purposely put a visual with it. That visual is going to be much more attractive than simple text. These little emojis, I got a fire emoji and I got a, a smiley emoji. That's going to add to the visual effect. I tagged Megan, right? So now if she shares it, I'm going to get to her audience. Also 1971, tag them. Guess what? These guys, because I've tagged them so many times, not only do they share it, but when I come in there, they make me look like a rock star with the people that I invite over for coffee. They are a phenomenal partner in my success. They're absolutely amazing. And it's because I've also tried to help love them up. I'm not asking for that. They do it because I've loved them up so much, which is awesome. Man, what a great habit to start loving up people so much that they start loving you up. <clears throat> here we go. We're doing a big event here. Uh, May, what's the date? 17th, 10th, I don't know. I think it's the 17th. But anyway, we're having it at Meeting Street. So what did I do? I did a live. Really, I just wanted to test the Wi-Fi here. Make sure we could stream it while we're here, right? So what did I do? I tagged Meeting Street. And I tagged Viviana, who is this gal right here. Amazing manager over there. And... You can see, I was I did this 16 hours ago, right? But we're just pumping up the local area. So here we go. Here is me, again, supporting uh, the area that I live in. Part of living in this amazing thing we call life is finding purpose and fulfillment in what we do. I take Kathy, who is this amazing woman down here, and uh, her organization, which is Graceway Village. And then I just said some incredibly kind, but honest, authentic things about her. And I talked about her long-term plans because I know if some people read this, they might help her with those plans. And then I gave her URL right here so people can go see her site, right? I took some great photos, edited them to make them look sharp, and I posted all this stuff. Let's go through a couple more. Pray to Homes. I don't represent Coulter. In fact, I do represent Grand. So why would I do this? Because I want people to see the Pray to Homes. A long-term goal of mine is to make that parade a much bigger event in the local area. So I ain't, I'm not just going to talk about it. I'm going to go do it. I'm going to go to the Parade of Homes. I'm going to mention the builder here, and I'm going to showcase some of the things that you as a potential buyer can go around in your community and see. If you're not going to see it this year, then at least I'm promoting it for next year, right? Here again, uh, we got some photos. I couldn't get a video because there were some great people in there having a great discussion with the realtor. I didn't want to bother them with a promotional video, so I took some photos, right? Here again, Pray to Homes, Holiday Builders. When you see this as a potential buyer or seller in this market and you see Joe Rosen is out at the parade looking at multiple different properties, taking videos, taking photos, and presenting them on Facebook live, number one, you think hopefully I'm confident. I know what I'm talking about. I know the industry, I know the market, and I'm out there in it every day working hard. That is what I'm trying to pitch indirectly. I'm out here. I'm doing it, guys. Here's some more information. Here's where you're helping people. You're educating people. If you're having issues paying your mortgage or rent payments, right, that's real estate right there. So now they're connecting me to real estate. Here's a potential solution. Go to this website for more information, or you can email this email address for help. 
And then it tells them just basic information about a grant that has been provided to help them with those payments, right? Super helpful. Again, that's me just trying to connect to the local people who are having a challenging time. By the way, guys, the more of this stuff you put up, right? I'm the guy who's at the parade. I'm the guy who's got information about these grants. I'm the guy who's connected to Graceway Village. You start to become the great connector in your area. I can't tell you how many people will send me DMs and say, hey, Joe, I just lost my job. I remember the first time I got that. <clears throat> and I responded with, I, I said really nicely, I'm really sorry you lost your job. That's horrible. I'm so sorry to hear that. But I was thinking, I don't know who you are. Why are you telling me this? But what it came down to was they were telling me that because they expected me to connect them to somebody who had a job opening, right? I didn't realize that. But I've created that responsibility, which is an awesome responsibility. And I truly want to appreciate that by connecting them with people. So I do. I can't tell you how many people who are making minimum wage maybe lost their jobs. I found them a job. I found them a rental. I found them uh, the connection to a person who could get them a dog, something, something I'm not a professional at, but I put a little bit of effort in. I got it done. And now they're referring me to their uncle who's coming down from Michigan and wants a $530,000 home. Guys, don't limit yourself. Maybe that person will never buy a home. Doesn't matter. Their uncle wants a $530,000 home. And I'm the guy who helped him. I'm the guy who built the relationship. Didn't ask for anything. And I'm the great connector, right? So now they're helping me get in touch with these people. Here was me uh, pitching this event again a few days ago. <coughs> this is an awesome post. I'm going to tell you why. I'm working on a transaction right now with termites. Boom. Without pitching anything, I just told my whole audience, hey, just so you know, I'm a real estate agent because I said I'm working on a transaction right now. So they get it. I don't have to put up, hey, look at my new listing. Hey, look at my open house. There's subtle ways to tell everybody I'm a real estate agent without telling everybody I'm a real estate agent. Now, I take my good buddy, Jamie Hannon, right? He's the CEO of the best pest control company in the area. And I said, Jamie Hannon himself called me this morning to explain the situation, give me all my clients' options, and made some incredibly helpful recommendations. I told Jamie, I hold Jamie on a pedestal personally. Here, I'm giving him an authentic, genuine compliment. He's an amazing person. The fact that he had so much value as my favorite pest control guy is just icing on the cake. Thank you so much, Jamie. Right? And then I've got his card out here. Then I tagged his business. And if I had a little bit more time and did a better job, I would have tagged the three or four employees that I know work there. Because guess what? They would have commented, they would have liked it, and they potentially would have shared it. <clears throat> now I can tell you, Jamie just sent me a great video this morning. And it was him at that site where he didn't get the business. It's somebody that he referred to me who does tenting. He doesn't do tenting. But he still showed up to make sure that the person he referred is doing a good job. And he made me a video to let me know he was out there doing it. Dude, this dude is an all-star. He's amazing. I appreciate that. That's awesome stuff, right? So you're building that community. You're building that trust. You're building that rapport with people. And you're doing it with these different posts. By the way, guys, if you've not noticed, I've not talked about one new listing yet. I've not talked about one contract that I've written yet. I'm not saying I don't do it. I'm just saying that's not all you're going to find on the Joe Rosen page. Positivity wins every time. This is me just yelling at the camera for four minutes and 10 seconds about being positive. It's me right after the gym, just getting excited, man, and sharing that excitement with everybody. <clears throat> Here, I love this one. This is my girls being absolute boneheads and just dancing, right? They're having a good time. <clears throat> it says, I better keep selling homes. I don't see those dance scholarships coming through quite yet. So I'm giving my girls a hard time, right? But they see I'm a family man, which is awesome. And they also see I better keep selling homes. So they see I'm a real estate agent. I did not have to say it directly. And I did not have to post my new listing to do it. Okay, let's go through two more. Gratitude. This is a page out of the Gary Vaynerchuk book. Gratitude in the middle of two hearts. That's it. I got 42 people who liked or loved it. And I bet you if I open this up, yep, it's about 50-50 on the hearts. That's pretty dang awesome, man. Pretty awesome. Here's the last one. Okay, great. Uh, Joe Rosen is with Susan. Susan's a good friend of mine, awesome person. 
Uh, and she mentioned that her daughter, who's 17, well, I'll read the post. Hired Brianna, that's the gal right here, and I tagged her, and I tagged her mom. Hired her today to detail our car. She rocked it. This girl's in high school and ROTC. She's a battalion commander at her school. She's running her own business in her spare time. She goes to basic training this summer, and there's no doubt she has an incredibly bright future, bright future to look forward to. She's looking for more business, so if you would like an amazing, affordable car detailing, look no further, Brianna Rocks. I told you guys, be the great connector in your area. Look at this photo. She's smiling and she's working. Her mom's tagged. She's tagged. 57 comments, two shares, and 137 of whatever these things are called. Right? Let's look at some of these comments. <coughs> All right, I got a fireball. That's cool. Dennis, he's probably my biggest supporter. Awesome. That's awesome. I would love my car cleaned. She got in connection with her because I built a three-way DM with Brianna and Stacy and said, Brianna, you need to get to work, man. Stacy needs some help. Here's another one. Any way I can help a JROTC kid do something, I'm all in. There's another three-way DM I created with voice. We're going to talk about voice in a bit. Here's Susan, the mom. Thank you so much. Proud parent moment. By the way, Susan is a client of mine. I'm working with Susan right now. Awesome client. I'm building that trust and that rapport, and I'm helping her kid, man. This young woman has an amazingly bright future. Thank you so much. Thank you to everyone else. Peter Sicoli, who's in my all-star group. I'm going to tell you about my all-star team here in a second. Wrote, Sale insurance, Sailfish Insurance Group is in. Let me know when we can get on the schedule. We have two cars for sure that are in. I'm not going to go through all these comments, but I tell you, she got 11 jobs from this post. Guess who appreciates Joe Rosen? Her and her mom. And guess what? Her dad is also looking at buying an investment property with me. You're building those connections with people by just loving them up. I don't, I don't think with any of these posts, have I talked about real estate once? I don't think I have. Ah, here, the parade of homes I did. So we got three parade of homes posts that talk about houses. I think what you're, you know, you're, you're doing it subtly. <clears throat> yeah. It's not, here's my listing. Here's how awesome I am. You know, here's what I've done. It's just all about love and positivity and gratitude. And what you're about is a family guy and you have some hobbies. Yeah, I actually didn't show your baseball card hobbies in there, yeah. but that's really what it's all about. So the subtlety, I love what you're saying is, hey, I say I'm a realtor, mm. but I'm not like, hey, look at me. Yeah. Yep. A hundred percent. And I think that's a great point. And it, it is, I don't want to say it's challenging, but I've sat down with people who are like, okay, great. But how do I do that? You have to sit down and just put a little time and effort into it. And you have to just push yourself. Tell yourself, today I'm putting out four posts. I don't know what they're going to be like. They might be horrible, but do it. Commit to the number four and just make it happen. Just make it happen no matter what, right? And yeah, your posts might suck, but you'll start to get better and better and better. Go look at my page. Take the stuff I'm doing and just copy it, man. Don't think outside the box. Just copy stuff. Take it and run with it and make your, I want to mention this too. Who do you think I attract by putting stuff out like that? Awesome, fun, loving, positive, highly motivated, logically thinking people. That's who I'm attracting because that's what I'm putting out there. You will attract who you are in front of these people. <clears throat> so that's something to think about. Okay, here's another big one. 50 to 70% of your posts should be real estate right? I mentioned a little bit of real estate in 50 to 70% of those posts. It might've been, I better keep selling houses because my girls don't know how to dance well. That's a little bit of real estate intertwined. The other 30 to 50% can be just you building that rapport, building out who you are as a person, right? Uniquely respond to every comment on your post. I don't even put likes anymore. It's all hearts. Yeah. It's all hearts. If you get a negative comment, then I won't put anything. But it's pretty rare that I get negative comments. Everything is a heart because I love this, man. And people notice that. I can't tell you how many people have sent me DMs and say, I appreciate that you don't just like, but you love every comment that I put on your stuff. Yeah, you got it. Of course, I love that, man. I appreciate that. And when you comment, don't just say, thanks, 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 thanks. Be unique and build a special connection. Make that person feel super special with the comments. So when you come through, don't just say thanks. Sometimes I might say, thanks, I appreciate it. Hey, I saw your kids 
over on the lake fishing the other day. It looked like little Jimmy caught a big one. I want some pics. That's awesome. I just built a personal connection with that person by talking about their kid, fishing, a real situation. That's great. <clears throat> Maybe you haven't seen the person for a year. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate it. By the way, we have not seen each other for over a year. The last time I saw you was at the Grand Construction Model. We got to do coffee soon. I'm going to send you a DM with a time. Does that take a little bit more time and effort? Yes. But now I just created a coffee. I created an appointment with someone where we can sit and talk about their life, what's going on. Guess what? If they want to buy or sell, they're probably going to bring it up. You know how many times in those coffees, I literally didn't bring up real estate once. And they'll say, hey, John, down the street from me, he is looking to build. And I know that you put up grand construction stuff all the time. Can you help him out? Hell yeah, I can help him out. Here's my card, man. What's his number? I'll reach out to him. Monique wrote positive plus positive equals positive. Yeah, I dig that. Positive squared, baby. I like it. I like it. That's awesome. Did that so post just come up at the side of the page? Is that for everybody? That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, everybody sees that. That's Candace our- doing an amazing job back there. Yeah. Oh my Thanks, Lord. Candace. Making Man. us look good. Man. She does so uniquely uh, comment. Yep, we talked about that. Talked about that. Okay, so at the end of the day, when I'm sitting there, thank you, Emmett. I appreciate it. Uh, when I'm sitting there, uh, on my butt at the end of the day, and I'm wiped out mentally and physically, and I'm next to my wife who's watching whatever she wants to watch on Netflix because I don't get the choice. All I do is I open up my Facebook, and yes, after I'm done with my posts, I will go to my news feed and start looking through other people's posts. Now, I don't give myself a number, but I guarantee I go over this number. For you guys, for tracking purposes, because you haven't done this as much, I'm telling you, 10 to 20 comments on other people's posts every single day. Do it while you're eating lunch. Do it while you're going to the bathroom. Do it while you're watching Netflix. I don't care when you do it, but there is time when you just are like, I need a break. Cool. Your break is to go through. I'll do it right now. I'm telling you right now, I have no idea what I'm going to find. I'm going through my page. Here's a good one. Elaine Davis, right? She is a wonderful person, wonderful agent with another brokerage locally, phenomenal attitude, great smile, positive person. I love her. She's awesome. She wrote, congratulations, Kaylee and Dom. And then a bunch of fun little emojis. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your uh, amazing journey to first time ownership. And then a bunch of stuff about her, right? Just an awesome, awesome, fun post. And it's got photos of this young couple in front of their house. That's exciting. Am I going to give it a like? Nope. I'm going to give it a love. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to say, I'm going to tag her, Elaine. <clears throat> you are such a hard working. Po- I'm just repeating everything I just told you guys. It's unique and authentic. You are such a hard working, positive person. Dot, dot, dot. These two are so lucky to have you in their corner. Way to go. And congrats exclamation exclamation champagne bottle celebration and a little bit of balloon boom it's unique how long did that take me 19 seconds right super simple super simple stuff and i meant it like i know her i like her i think she's phenomenal that is awesome just do 10 to 20 of those a day that's it super simple right okay so we got that done thank you carlene Great info, Joe and Alex. Oh, a little heart. I'm fire. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, so let me uh, just come in here a little bit, Joe, around this. Uh, really, you know, this is a big word, and we, they, we talk about it a lot, and not everybody understands what it is, including myself. Like, what it, I understand the concept of it. We talk a little bit about how the algorithm likes that. Like, why, why do all this? And if everybody doesn't really know, you know, what the algorithm likes, which puts Joe at the top of everybody's feed. So not only, so you could be doing this stuff. That's part of the thing with paying for ads guys is that you could pay for ads, but if it's an ad, people see it as an ad to see it as sponsored. They kind of go buy it. They know it's an advertisement. So you say, well, if I put some stuff up, who really cares? It does take time. It does take effort and it is the good fight. And it is. So take it from there. Right. 
Yeah, so you're not seeing every post that your friends are putting out there, right? They've got, and I don't know what the numbers are, but maybe 20% of your audience is seeing your post. Maybe 50% of your audience is seeing your post. What it depends on is that, and let's take Alex as an example, right? If Alex likes every one of my posts, makes a comment on every one of my posts, shares all my posts, Alex is going to see 100% of my posts because they don't know what I'm even posting. All that robot machine algorithm sucker knows is that I got to point in the right direction. This human over here with this account really digs this human's posts all the time. So let's keep putting this human's posts in front of that human. That's all it knows. So it's looking at how often you like it, how often you comment. Do I comment back? Does he then comment back? Are there shares? Right? All of those things will increase the percentage of time that Alex is going to see my posts. So if you're creating content like, hey, look at my new listing, that's not very engaging. You may or may not get a like. You're probably not going to get a share. Maybe you will. Um, comment like, what am I going to say? You'll get Joe Rosen saying, hey, way to go. Great new listing because that's what I do. But other than the Joe Rosens out there, you're probably not going to get a lot of comments on that. Hey, look at my kids goofing around and dancing like boneheads. And then I make a funny joke about them. That's funny. And it's family, right? I don't know how many comments I got that. I got a bunch of comments on there. All of those comments increase the percentage of time that the algorithm is going to put my posts in front of those people in the future. So if you make really engaging, really fun, shareable, likable, commentable posts, it's going to increase the amount of time that you are in front of these people. So that's a great point, Alex. <coughs> um, create your audience. This is a big one. Create your audience. So I did it on accident. And now that I look back, I'm like, that was brilliant. But honestly, it was on accident. When I was coming down here from Washington State, I didn't know a soul. And because I didn't know a soul, I wanted to fill up my audience. But I don't know anybody. How am I going to do it? Well, guess what? I can go search out who the mayor is. I can go search out who the city council members are. I can go find the biggest businesses on Google. And then I can look up who their owners are, who are their managers. I can go onto their pages and I can start seeing who's tagged in their photos, who are their employees. I can start finding the deans of different schools. Those are easy things to find. Superintendents, right? The highly influential people. Who's running uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters? Who's running the Girl Scouts? Who's like You can find all that stuff. It's public knowledge if you do a little bit of digging. You can send them a friend request. And guys, better than sending a friend request, if I want to connect to, I got to keep pointing the right way, Alex, and I don't know Alex, I send him a friend request, I got maybe a 50% chance that he'll say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to friend this guy. But if instead I know that Alex is really good friends with Bob and I'm one of Bob's posts, I say, hey, Bob, I keep seeing Alex pop up on your thing and he's got such great content, seems like a really positive guy. This guy's a high producing realtor. I'd love you to connect us with a lunch or a coffee, man. I'll pay. Now I go send Alex a friend request. He sees that comment. He sees this. He sees my positivity. I want to buy coffee. Now my odds are 80, 90% that he's going to like that and he's going to. Uh, take my friend request, right? Creating your audience is key. Dial it in. I really appreciate you guys sharing your mindset. The man, the myth, the legend. I love you, bud. Yeah, absolutely. So create the audience you want to create. And backwards engineer, right? Reverse engineer that sucker by thinking, who do I want? Now, guess what? Every time I put something out uh, and I need someone highly influential high, in, a, in a big position, I need someone at a school. I need someone who's on the city council. I can tag them and say, hey, you're on the city council. I know you know this stuff. How can you help out? Guess what I just did to that city council member? I put them in a position to be the professional expert on whatever that is. They can type in a comment and they're thinking, I just got three more votes. Thanks, Joe. Right? I'm also helping whoever had the question. You're becoming the great connector. I'm going to sprint through the last couple notes here because I want to get done here in about three minutes so I can turn it over to Alex. Tags, increase your sharing. So when I go out, right, I completely failed with Megan on that post where I was bragging about her. I should have taken a phenomenal photo with her face and my face in it. Behind us should have been all of the signs for 1971 roasters. And then in there, I tag Megan. Maybe I tag her local Remax company that she's with. I tag 1971 roasters. And then I tag the gal who I know is the owner, and I know at least three or four employees there, I take all them, guess what they're going to do? <laughs> share. They're going to share it. And now their audience is seeing it. Right? Big things. 
<coughs> send three to five. Yes, five voice DMs every single day. I think voice is huge. I can't tell you how many people will see my voice DMs and they'll say, Joe, I've never had anybody send me a voice DM. That's super cool. I appreciate that. Let someone right now. Just go find somebody. Love them up, right? Guys, I want you to see how simple this is. I think people look at this stuff and they think it's tough. It is not tough. Um, I think it's like a lot of things, Joe. It's it's that you know getting started, you know, and 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 because it seems like a lot, but once you get going, and that's you know, well, I, what do we? It's like yeah. you got to start somewhere. Yeah. And I love what you have at accountability around your team, you know, and hold, have somebody hold you accountable out there, guys. Yes. Say, hey, we're going to do this together. And yeah. I'm going to say each morning, like I have an accountability group yep. on my phone awesome. with my agents, right? And it's just a text at 6.30 in the morning. I'm not saying you need to do it at 6.30, but make an agreement, make it sacred and say, hey, you know, we're <coughs> each going to do five posts a day and let's give each other feedback on those posts, right? And like, do it like Joe does. Love people up, try to be subtle about it and say, hey, you could have been a little bit, be, be authentic about your feedback, be genuine. Don't just glad hand somebody and say you did a good job. Like, hey, if you see something in there that you, hey, did some grammatical errors, you might not want to use this emoji there. You'll make each other better, right? And that's 100%. what Joe's doing with his team. You know, if like, hey, holding them accountable, and that you, if you can't hold yourself accountable, you need to find an accountability partner. Boom. You know, and just and this stuff is the good fight. If you're a real estate agent, even if you're spending a bunch of money out mm -hmm. there, I do some, not as much as this maniac. <laughs> But, um, you know, it, it's powerful, guys. So, you know, if, whatever you got to do, if you got to find an accountability partner, that's a good way to go. Okay, so I'm going to leave a voice DM. This is how simple it is, right? This is a client. We've done three deals together. Good friend of mine. And he's also a baseball card nerd. That's how I found this guy, right? He called me today wanting to offer me before he offers anybody else these cards he's got for sale. I was kind of short with them because I was super busy. I was prepping for this. I've got two deals I'm working with. So here's going to be my voice DM to him. Hey, bud, I just wanted to reach out now that I've got a little bit of time and say thank you. You didn't have to call me with uh, the old insider's report there on those cards. That one is beautiful, man. I'd love a price on that. I appreciate it. But I just wanted to say thank you more than anything for thinking of me first. Have an awesome day, my man. Boom. One of five. Send four more and you're done. These things take seconds. It's super simple. It might look, oh my God, Joe sends three to five a day. That's crazy. Yeah, times 10 seconds, it's 50 seconds. It's easy, easy stuff. Uh, we talked about that. Two stories a day. You do a lot of things to get your audience bigger, but if you want your audience to go deeper with you, create that depth, you can do it through stories. So put up a lot of fun stuff just about you, out at showings, out at listings. What's your day look like, right? Just document your journey in your stories. It's good stuff. Um, yeah, heavy on videos and pictures. Text only is the most boring thing you can put up. At least throw some emojis up there. But get a really beautiful photo, something that's really attractive. You can brand yourself on there. Get a video, whatever it is. And guys, you can go to Canva. It's super cheap and you can build some beautiful stuff. I'm a bonehead with marketing, man. But I got on there and in about 20 minutes, I had that sucker fill, uh, figured out. It's good stuff. Uh, Facebook user, I don't know who that is. But being able to take constructive criticism is huge. Yes, self-awareness. And being able to take that criticism is huge. I could not agree more. If you can't take it in a positive manner as a way to be better, you will not grow. That's a phenomenal comment. Phenomenal comment. Okay, I'm going to sprint through the rest of this stuff. Yes. Okay. Start your videos with your logo. Your logo is your face. I'm telling you, I got a logo. Nobody knows it. I put it everywhere. Nobody knows it. But they know this big old face right here. So every video I do, if I want to show somebody these phenomenal granite countertops, I'm going to start with my face. Guys, what's going on, man? Joe Rosen here. I'm in an awesome house with an awesome kitchen, some awesome cabinets. Or I'm sorry, countertops. Let me show you. By the way, I just made that mistake. Not a big deal. Nobody cares. It's authentic. Then I flip the camera around. Boom. Look at that sparkle. Look at that shine. Look at that, that backsplash. Doesn't that look sharp? Guys, if you want a backsplash like that, you want granite countertops like that, right? These aren't any old plain granite countertops. These are phenomenal. This is a $2,500 upgrade over normal base granite. You got to call Elite Custom Granite. I'm going to put all their information, take it above, call them, check it out. Guys, I'm telling you on a Saturday, just go over there and have some fun looking at granite. It is awesome. Boom, done. Guess who loves me? Elite Custom Granite. 
And it's interesting. It's funny. Even if you don't care about granite countertops, all that energy is just fun, funny stuff. So build that rapport with people, right? But always start with your face. A lot of people are scrolling. If they look at a third of a second of your video, but they get your face, you just branded yourself. They saw none of your video and you just branded yourself, right? The goal of all this stuff should be to get in the DMs, right? You're upping the level of intimacy in your communication, right? Post, comment, a DM, a voice DM, a coffee or lunch. The higher the level of intimacy that you get with these people when it comes to communication, the better chance there is of building a really strong relationship that will turn into transactions, right? So try to turn these into appointments. We talked about that. Yes, okay, I'm just gonna touch on this for two minutes. This will be the last thing. Build your all-star team. So many new agents are like, I can't get listing appointments. I can't get buyer appointments. There are a million ways to do it, but if you can't do that, go for the third best thing, which is building your all-star team, okay? I've got a networking group. You don't need a networking group to have that all-star team. Think about the people who are gonna help your clients. Don't think about you, think about your clients. They're going to need financial advisors, plumbers, electricians. They're going to need roofers. They're going to need pavers. They're going to need pool people. They're going to need fencers. They're going to need all kinds of folks. Your job is to create three, four, five appointments with each one of these. Three to five fencing appointments, three to five electrician appointments. Go meet these people. Find the best electrician and then get their business card. Save it in a folder on your phone in pics. And then when you want a post, uh, their information on Facebook, or you want to share it with somebody in a meeting, or your client says, hey, I need the best plumber you got. Who do you got? I just texted it to you, man. Right? Now you can love these people up quickly and efficiently, and you've got a great excuse to get in front of a whole bunch of people. I can't tell you how many times I meet with big people who there's no way they can say, I love Joe Rosen publicly. They would lose a ton of business, right? Because they got a whole bunch of realtors working with them. But behind the scenes, they connect me to all kinds of people because I love them up on Facebook. I connect them to a lot of people. I get them a lot of business. So be the great connector and continuously, if you can't get listing appointments, if you can't get buyer appointments, get an all-star team appointment. It's super easy and promote the crap out of them. All right, Alex, I'll shut up. That was some pretty good stuff there. That's that enough was, to keep them busy. That was some awesome stuff. You know, I think that everybody out there probably knew a certain part of all of this, it, it, you know, but to put it all together with the enthusiasm, and I think that the underlying concept of this is that you're adding value. You're helping people to, to do business or you're helping people to even, I'll even say it like this, man, you're spreading love. You know what cool. I mean? You, th that is valuable to just have a, a breath of fresh air of somebody genuinely enthusiastic and caring and out there of course it's about business now you know i just think it's i think it's really amazing what you're doing joe from a number of different ways and i really think that the underlying part of it is that you know we talk about the news out there and all this kind of thing of the stuff the crap that's going on in the world especially after this last year we've been through and you know you're just there you know like genuinely genuinely and this guy i tell you what guys it's not just when he comes on the camera it's not behind the scenes it's not he's showing this stuff to he is a, a model father a model citizen a model person Man. and yeah i mean it's just genuine and you know of course anybody well, it's just about business he's not fake so you know just try to you know even if you are a negative person and you're like i want to be more like that just move towards that Yep, you sure. can start to just start to try to, do, hey, oh, you know, I'm, I think the world is this or whatever. Just try to start to move towards yep. doing it. And then you will become like that. Because yeah. I tell you what, I'm a testimony to that. Um, I've gone through a lot over the last couple of years, especially. I used to be a very stoic kind of person. And uh, by being around more people like Joe and emulating what I see on Facebook, if I see something on Facebook that is actually negative, they get blocked. You know I mean, I don't want to, to Joe's point, he's now surrounding himself with people that are positive, you know, enthusiastic and, you know, Hey, we all go through our stuff. Don't get me wrong. We all get frustrated. Joe is not, you know, rainbows and rosebuds True. all the time. He gets frustrated like the rest of us, but at the end of the day, it's the good fight to be a good citizen, to be, you know, loving, to be, to, to, to give. And uh, I just want to, I want to give you a big shout out for that, man. Cause I think it's I appreciate it. That was awesome. That's true. It's uh, it's 100% true. So what we're going to do right now, guys, is we're going to do a little something of a, 
of a presentation on the organization that ties Joe and I together. And uh, we call this kind of, uh, I call it the, the, in some ways, the napkin presentation because it really is, a, is, a, is an overview. Sometimes we could do this when somebody asks us about the company that we're with, uh, how to explain it. And it's a, it's, it can be a bigger animal to explain, but I think what the really, the underlying piece to it is that this why Joe and I here are on this show. And it's what we want to do is add value. We really do come from that place of just like Joe is talking about here of adding people, adding value to people's lives, uh, being a great connector, providing them with something that will help them further their lives. You know, if it's their business, hey, maybe they just got, you know, happy that day because they get to see Joe's daughters bouncing around and his funny comment about, hey, I got to like, you know, I got to make some more houses because I'm not dancing. It's not going to be in their future. You know, it's just like somebody makes somebody smile. That's adding value. So don't think that you got to be like, oh, I got to add value from a standpoint of what are the interest rates at? Don't put up, guys, point. don't put up the posts that everyone else puts up. They'll just give you that. Don't, don't put interest rates are at an all time low. Da, da, da. Like you just, you don't separate yourself. What separates you is, hey, I got to sell more houses because my daughters are bouncing around like, you know, you know, the jumping bean, Mexican jumping beans, you know, and they don't really have it. So the point is what brings Joe and I together is EXP. And uh, we'd love you to stick around for this presentation because even if you think you know about EXP, you probably don't. It took me actually a couple months, two, three, six months, and I'm still peeling back layers on, you know, what EXP is about. Uh, EXP is, uh, is, a, is a model for you to promote your brand on. So Joe and I are promoting our brand, which is the Treasure Coast Alliance, okay? But also that's under EXP, okay? So under EXP is EXP is a global uh, company, all right? So other companies are global companies, whether you're Remax or Keller, and I'm not ripping on any of these. I'm just saying these are global companies, right? They start with an international, right? Keller Williams started in a small place and now it's around the world. Remax is around the world. Cold Black and Banker, around the world. Century 21, around the world, right? Sotheby's, around the world. So these are these are global brands. And whether also, we're talking franchises here too. This is not a franchise. I'll let you know that. So you don't have to buy a franchise, which is an amazing thing about eXp. It offers an immense amount of value without having to purchase a franchise. It's literally 149 bucks and 85 bucks a month to have you know stock ownership and all these other things we're going to get into. But most of these, this is the way that it went before. It started with an international, and then that international basically packaged something and said, if you follow this model or you go within this model, we're going to do your branding. We're going to get you trained. We're going to provide all of this value, right? And then you, know, you have a system that you can go and sell. So that international starts with that idea, starts with that system, starts with that concept. Remax, their disruptive piece, I'm, just, I'm not ripping on anything here, just going, their disruptive piece was that they were, they when there was 50-50 splits back in the 80s, when my dad was in the business, uh, they basically said, hey, if you're a top producer, come over here and you only have to pay rent and a small uh, franchise fee, right? And th the difference they made up for, the, for, for their ROI. And that was their differentiating value proposition to the agents at the time. So it, Remax went out and took that and said, we're going to bring this to New England. All right. So they would go sell that region of New England. They would sell it to somebody for, you know, say $250,000 or whatever. I'm going to make it up the number. Uh, and then that person that owned the region of New England, Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, right? They would... Um, then sell off that regional owner would sell off the territory of Maine, New Hampshire. You get it, right? So they'd sell off those territories. Now, that person that owned the territory could open their own franchise. That's when actually those are the people that actually spend the most money. They're the ones actually taking probably the most risk because you have to go out. You got to get brick and mortar. You got to you know get your accountant, secretary. Um, Expenses. These are all the things of of, of salaries. Um, again, everything from your your uh, your AC breaks to your uh, secretary gets COVID, and now you have to deal with that. It's it's part of what having a business is. So there's a pretty good return on it when it works for you and things stay stay healthy, and your managers are good, and your staff's good, and guess what? You also have a nice robust 
amount of agents to create the money that needs to go up the line to pay for the managers, to pay for the expenses, to pay for the franchise owner, right? Because the franchise owner has got to get paid, right? The expenses get paid first. Anybody that owns a business, you better be, you know, have money after expenses or it's, you know, not a very profitable or, uh, you know, that there is no profit. If you don't have money after expenses, there is no profit. That can happen a month or two here or there. Sometimes people go through lean times, but at the end of the year, if you go year over year and you don't have money after expenses, this is not a good situation, right? So the money goes up to the franchise owner, also the territory owner. These are the guys and ladies that have do really well within this model, right? Because you just owned that territory. You paid money for it back in the 80s. You own the territory. Every subway uh, in that area pays you a small fraction of a royalty. That's what royalties are, or franchise fees. So if you see that coming out of your check, that's who it's paying. It's paying the territory owner. And it's paying a regional owner, right? And again, they they were the ones that kind of took the initial risk, but not the biggest risk because it's two hundred fifty thousand dollars. They don't have a reoccurring expenses going on. This franchise owner has reoccurring expenses going on, and this becomes problematic. There's a reason. So this is the old model. The reason that it comes problematic is when you're in stuck in this model, okay, and you're a franchise owner, and I don't care whether it's Let's just use the, the elephant in the room is Blockbuster, okay? If you owned a Blockbuster as a franchise owner, and that's what they were, and then, re, and then um, Netflix comes along, and all of a sudden, there's something much better, okay? It, and it's a better – when we say better, what is that? It's value. The consumer sees it as more value. Now, in this particular paradigm – uh, we're talking about the consumer is the agent. We are the consumers. Okay. So as an agent, I am a consumer of which, which brand am I going to put my brand under? Right. Because EXP is just a brand and a model that has a massive amount of value. But at the end of the day, without agents, it doesn't mean anything. And the same thing with Keller or Remax or whatever. So the real consumers out there are the agents. So where am I going to go where I'm going to see the most value? And that's what the consumer did with Netflix. The consumer said, well, I don't have to go in and bring my, my thing back. I don't have to get in the car and do that. I don't have to pay late fees. And now all of a sudden streaming comes along. Blockbuster, guess what? Like your, your, your value proposition is superseded by something that provides more value to somebody else. I'm just using that as an example, right? L look at Uber. Uber's another great example, right? Yellow Cab got bankrupted by Uber. And um, what's the other one? I don't know. Um, but I digress. My point is, is that if you had to pay half, you're clicking that thing. If you had to pay a uh, half a million dollars for a yellow cab franchise, a medallion, that's what it's called. A medallion is a yellow cab franchise. And there'll be people that would buy, I don't know if you guys know this, five or six people would buy one yellow cab because it was that good a business and they had a driver in it going 24 yep. seven and they wouldn't even be the driver. Some of them were the drivers, some of them weren't the drivers. That was a franchise. Somebody bought a little business. That was a yellow cab. And then Uber comes along and you don't have to have a half million dollars to have your own little business. You just have to get a background check, put a locator in your car, slap a little light up in the side of your thing, and away you're done. And guess what Uber's doing as well? They're now renting cars that people can go and drive, which is even maybe even going to kick out the guy that's got the car that does what – you see what I'm saying? Like your model is only as good as – how the market starts to move. And if somebody else can provide more value and you're stuck in a model, right? And that's, I believe, what's happened here and why EXP has grown so much. We doubled agents in the last year. I mean, it's, it's amazing, the growth. Because what EXP did was they put the international below and they made the agents owners. So going back here, who's the owner, Joe? Franchise owner. Yeah. Territory owner, Not region the owner. There's no agent owner down here. You're just grinding a transaction treadmill, which is a great business. 
If you listen to Joe, you're going to go out there and make $8 million, $8 million in volume. If you do what he says and you or you align with him as well, he can show you more tricks. I can show you more tricks. And that's part of what Joe and I are doing here. We're in alignment. We're part of the Treasure Coast Alliance. We're together. But I don't have a franchise agreement with Joe. I don't have a territory agreement with Joe. I don't have a regional agreement with Joe. I have a model that I am under an international. So again, this is what we say, like EXP is a model that's built to serve your brand. It's not about EXP. It's about you and you're the owner. So how do they do that? How do they create ownership? Well, that's a good question. So they create ownership by uh, a couple things. They created some technology or actually rather, I'm sorry, we actually bought the technology, which is called Verbella. Okay. Now Verbella is people heard about EXP, probably about the cloud world and the cloud world is basically our cloud-based campus. And, you know, three, four, five, and especially nine years ago when Glenn Sanford, our our visionary genius founder came up with a virtual real estate company in 2009. Does anybody know what came out in 2009? The first one that was a tiny little thing, the iPhone. That was when the, that's, so that's, you guys imagine, remember back then, like how different things were. Maybe some of you millennials don't, I don't know, but things were very, very different. There was still faxing going on. Scanning just came out. I remember this. Okay. I got some gray hair, so I remember this stuff. But my point is, is that Verbella creates this cloud-based campus similar to what Uber did. They didn't, they didn't need a, a switchboard. They didn't need someone to own a, 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 a physical cab. They didn't have to sell a franchise for an area. And the same with Blockbuster, right? The, the disruptive thing, like anybody seen Shark Tank? What are they looking for? disruptive models. They're looking for something like this thing has that everybody loves has been in place for years, decades in some instances. And now they want the disruptive piece that completely like takes that market share because they're looking at, okay, like that's a ride sharing like or a cab. Like that's a lot of money that's out there. And if you can go in and create something to grab that market share, that's what the sharks are looking for. So that's what EXP did by buying Verbella they understood that this technology, again, as well, some of you guys are out there with companies that have like this technology. Well, it's only for real estate. It's only for your specific company. Verbella is on par to beat out Zoom. And I, yeah, I just was the first guy to say it because once you can start to collaborate, uh, there's more things that you can do in the avatar world with screen sharing and that kind of thing than you can do with Zoom. OK, so if you now have a technology that now uh, multinationals use, Stanford University uses it, Joe's beloved U.S. military, the army uses Verbella. Like these are these are big time companies, government organizations, colleges using the technology that we own. So you say we. Yeah, we're the agents. We own it. We own this. Our, our founder put it under EXPI World Holdings, which I'll get into next year. So EXPI World Holdings is the EXPI is the ticker under NASDAQ, but it's EXPI World Holdings because guess what? EXP is not just a realty company. Now we're a techno we're a genuine technology company. We own technology that actually is valuable to the marketplace. We don't just own technology that's really good for our company. And it's going to beat out all the other companies. No, value. It's not this our thing, right? It's the world's thing, like literally. And so that's an amazing concept when you kind of wrap your head around that and go, well, what is it that EXP owns? Well, well EXP owns, and I'll get back to this. I'll go back a little bit. I don't know if anybody is aware, but we also just bought Success Magazine. And Success Magazine has all of Jim Rohn's content. If anybody's ever watched Success, um, Daryl Harding uh, actually was the founder of it, did an amazing job with it. And then Glenn Sanford saw it and said, really believed, uh, and I'll paraphrase Jim Rohn right now. If you guys don't know who Jim Rohn is, he's the guy that Tony Robbins started under, really, you know, under tutelage under him for almost six years. And um, 
Jim Rohn said that the level of your success is going to be in direct relation to the level of your personal development. So if you do not, in back to Joe's thing, getting comfortable with being uncomfortable, the only way to personally develop, just like working out, is to get uncomfortable. I'll just let you know that right now. You're not going to grow as a person unless you feel discomfort. No question. And Gary Vee is all about that. Like, just push yourself, suck it up, all that kind of stuff. David Goggins, we can get you guys that are going to basically, you know, be hardcore about it. But at the end of the day, that's why he bought Success Magazine and the board of directors okayed it because they wanted that to be an, in, they wanted personal development to be an integral part of this company. How, how visionary is that? Is the company that you're with own something that actually is dedicated to personal development? I don't know. Ask yourself. So you own that. We own that. Joe and I own that. Joe and I own a part of Success Magazine and Success Enterprises, which has all of Jim Rohn's content in it. It's pretty amazing. So we have revenue share in this company, and that's the third disruptive. Uh, all of these are disruptive to the real estate industry because nobody else out there owns technology that is viable and valuable to the general marketplace. No other real estate company out there has uh, the agent's own stock. No other real estate company out there has revenue share. So how does revenue share work? Well, guys, back to this over here, right? Back to all of the things that go into being an owner of a franchise or whatever it is, okay? So you're going to have expenses. You're definitely going to have expenses. Whether it's your time or what have you, you're going to have expenses. If you do not make enough revenue to offset expenses, then you have no profit, okay? That's that's the math. Now, what EXP did, because there's other models out there that have profit share, okay, which is great if there's profit, and it's a cool kind of thing. I was with a company that had profit share, and I would get a small check at the end of each month sometimes, uh, and then also I would get, I would see an agent that I had brought into the company, and then I would know that they closed something, and I wouldn't get a check. And I was like, why is that? Like, well, because the company wasn't profitable that month. Oh, okay, great. So it's by happen chance when I get paid. That's fine. I didn't do it for that. I didn't do it for the revenue share. But what I did do uh, is I moved to EXP for all of these reasons that, you know, all of a sudden the people that I attract to the model, get re I get revenue. I get a little piece of the company dollar. I get a little piece of the company dollar, not the agent's split, okay, which we'll get into next. This is revolutionary. So what this does is, is it takes away all of those, uh, all of the everything in between. So now you have the agents that are attracting people to the company. You don't have to have managers. I mean, you have managers in the cloud. They're all up in here, right? So, so now you can scale your staff amazingly. Right, because you basically have uh, gotten rid of the brick and mortar, which now after 2020, everybody knows brick and mortar is kind of toast. So um, this is what really, really attracted me. This and this. It was a lower split. So let's get into that. So it was a lower split. Here's the highlights: the agents or agent owners uh, freedom. So it's not a franchise. So there's the opportunity for revenue share, which ultimately all it is is an opportunity. This is not something where you move to EXP, change your business cards, all your friends that are realtors call you and join EXP. It's not that. What it is, is that you, it really forces, and I said this to Jay Kinder, actually, Joe, I don't know if I ever said this to you, but EXP has actually made me a better person. It's made me a better person, which is a, you Explain know. Explain that a little bit, because I agree with you, and I think I know where you're going. Yeah, I would say it's made me a better person because I genuinely, like, people can tell when you're full of shit. Right. People can tell when you're not genuine. Um, so, you know, do I want to attract people to EXP? Absolutely. Have I always been great about doing that with a loving way? No. Have I learned, though, because I've learned and learned and learned and learned. And that's why we started doing this stuff, Joe, because it's like, hey, to take and I'm a, I'm a pretty crazy about my time. Like, what is my time worth to me type thing? Um, I get pretty granular with that and almost like to the side where when I first started in the business where I used to look at 
people and I actually saw money. I didn't see people. And I got through that into, you know, hey, genuinely caring about the people that I was working with, but I or I wasn't as as much of with the other agents of being just try to be a great person. Yes. You know, and so what it has done, I, I realized that with with uh, real estate, with, you know, just genuine buyers and sellers. But what it did was it stepped up my game as a person to be better, like with the agents. And then now it just starts to resonate out of me. So that's what I mean. Thanks for asking that, Joe. Uh, it genuinely has made me a better person. And again, I'm not perfect. I, I, I make mistakes and I probably uh, put my foot in my mouth here and there. And it is what it is. I'm human. So uh, at the end of the day, I was attracted to the company because that I had an opportunity for financial freedom. No other model gave me that opportunity. No other model gave me ownership in the company. I used to own a franchise. I owned a franchise of a small local boutique, actually actually a very large company that was down in the largest market share in Palm Beach County when I joined the company, if anybody knows who it is out there. And I owned a franchise because I wanted to own something. I wanted like my dad owned something. I, you know, I want to be a business owner. I want to own what I'm in. Why wouldn't you? That's this is what the what the struggle is for me. I don't understand why people wouldn't want to own what they're in when it doesn't. When it actually, in most instances, costs them less. It just yeah. it continues to baffle me. But I go, hey, you know, everybody teaches own. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. So we're in an eighty twenty split. Um, EXP retains twenty percent of the split until you get to a sixteen thousand dollar cap. So we're the lowest cap out there for a company that provides the level. We provide a higher level of training, a higher level of service. If you want an answer, you can ask Joe about this. You can go into the cloud. You can go into EXP world within five or 10 minutes. You got your answer. You're talking to a broker or you're talking to somebody about compliance or you're talking to somebody about where's the training for this or that. You can find out right there. You can go and collect. Things. Yeah, man. We've got a really cool app on our phone. It's just like Facebook Messenger. It's called Work Chat. So when I'm not by my laptop and I can't get on EXP World, I'll literally be out looking at homes and I'll send a voice DM because it's quick or you can type it out if you want to, just like Facebook Messenger. And before I've left that house, a broker has gotten back to me, my broker, and said, Joe, here's the answer to your question. Awesome, right? For those of you who are single agents, you're looking at that 16 grand, and you're like, man, that's a really low cap. Guess what? If you're a team leader like I am, like Alex is, and you're thinking, yeah, okay, cool. But what about my team? I am super attracted to EXP because I'm able to take team members on and offer them an $8,000 cap, right? That's not something I can do at a lot of their places, any places maybe. So that is a really cool attraction piece for team leaders to know that they can come on and dangle that carrot in front of other agents. Yeah, it's a great piece. Candace, if we could put that in on the little side there that uh, teams are the caps for the agents are on a uh, $8,000 cap. <clears throat> and I'm actually, there's a, just to get it like, if you're going to go there, Joe, I'm going to go there. For mega teams, which is my goal by the end of this year, mega teams have uh, 10 agents uh, do over 175 transactions and 45 million in volume. So we did about that volume last year, did 150 transactions. So I see us getting that and I see us getting to that in agent count. And then guess what? The agents go on a $4,000 cap. And guess what? They get everything. There's no, so your cap goes down, but your service uh, and your value does not go down and your opportunity is the same. Your yep. opportunity stays the same. Everybody has the same opportunity. And uh, if you use some of the tactics that Joe talked about today uh, with agents, you know, it really works. But you got to be authentic. You got to be a good person. So at the end of the day, lead generation is huge. So for you guys out there, uh, we get a KV Core account. Uh, we have a, something called Make It Rain. Maybe we could put that in there, Candace, that cool little like icon of Make yeah, It get Rain. Money raining down. I like it. Yeah, like money raining down. Like, so what it is, is it's pay per click. So if you guys out there are like, yeah, you got to set up the KV Core account, but it's not like splitting atoms. We're not curing cancer here. You know, it's something you can go in and get the training with EXP, or you could even hire somebody on Fiverr, but you need your own website. Joe and I did an episode on, you know, CRMs. You better have a CRM. You know, I, whether you're with a team that does a super robust one and does a massive amount of advertising like we do, this is a way for you as an individual agent to go out and have your own website. And have your own customer relation manager that you can text people, call people, uh, email them. Uh, you can, and then what you can do is EXP 
Well, you could say homes for sale. I don't know if you guys know about pay-per-click, but just real quick, it's called AdWords. It's Google. Pay-per-click is homes for sale in Port St. Lucie. And there's a certain amount of cost to have that click. It drives people to your site. If your site's kind of cool and it has some functionality, people stay on it and they, what do they do? They register and become a lead. So that's what KV Core uh, is driven in through Make It Rain through that pay-per-click, which EXP will do for you. So there's a lot of agents out there like, I want leads. Hey, we got leads. You got to pay for them, you know, but they're very affordable. They're Let very affordable. One other thing out there too, if you yeah. work with a lot of these lead companies, right? Zillow, Ylopa, whoever it is, it doesn't matter. There's a minimum to get in and that minimum is pretty high. You got to be a producer already with a decent sized bank account to be able to afford some of these leads, right? The cool thing about KV Core and Make It Rain, if you've got 20 bucks a month, cool, put 20 bucks a month in, right? Once you start building up, you can put 2,000 a month. You can put whatever you want into that. Obviously, the leads are going to come back correlationally, but just know that you can start out with whatever it is you can afford and build all the way up. And I don't know a company out there that offers that opportunity. It's pretty dang cool. That's such a great call. And to your Facebook thing, not to get too granular with KV Core, but you can for free take listings and post them to Facebook and do some cool things around them to create organic opportunities. Wow. You yeah. can do that. You don't need money. You know, so we're not about all the, hey, come over here and buy. I'm just saying, if you want leads, you and you you should, and hopefully if you're still on here, um, you, you want a CRM, okay? You want a website. And for 85 bucks a month, I don't know like how much more valuable you can get, Joe. It just... It continues to just, I'm just so grateful because I know that eventually everybody's going to see it. I do believe that to Jay Kinder's point. I think at, at some point, everybody is going to see this, the a massive amount of value that's provided to the agent, not the owners. The agent is the owner. Mm. Owners are gone. That's, that's going to be, I think probably the, we're going to say in the, in the 2020s, uh, you know, agents, I, I do believe probably by the end of this decade, I don't see franchises still being around. Like, why would you do that? Why would you not own? You know, I, but I think it's like anything else. It takes some time. So uh, last bit here is 85 bucks a month. It's 149 to get in. Um, you know, I mean, I, you know, the, the value is just enormous. Plus, the last bit here is align yourself with people that expect more of you than you do. Didn't some of your best teachers, yeah, coaches, huge. parents, et cetera. That's a lot of what EXP is about. When I, my story, it's a long story, but the last part of the story, and I had trials and tribulations going through my journey of, you know, starting and being down, you know, all over the place, right? But at the end of it, you know, and I just paraphrased a, a, a quote out of Mastery, align yourself with people that ask more of you than you do. Didn't some of your best teachers, coaches, parents, et cetera, right? And that comes from mastery. That's uh, Stuart Emery. And, you know, within that, that's what I saw with an EXP. I was actually meditating and I was reading that over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And I was like, I please provide me universe with, you know, this tribe that I want to be around people that I'm, I'm like, in the room going, man, I don't, I think, you know, I'm a big fish in this pond. I know I'm a, I know I'm a little fish in the big pond. Right. And so I want to be in those room with those people. And even if it's around here, even if you're an individual agent and you're like, man, I, that sounds overbearing. It's like, no, I'm here to help you. Joe's here to help you. We have a vested interest because the company has made us an owner because the company is giving us revenue share, not you. So the company is paying us to help you. That's the way to look at it. The company is paying us to help you. I'm going to so, point out three quick things, if that's okay. Yeah, Number one, and he just mentioned it. If you're thinking, yeah, but I can go to any real estate company and I've got friends who are big agents and they will help me. Cool. And I'm sure they will. And they're super nice and they love you and they will give you a lunch. They will give you a coffee. Alex gives me a load of time and it's not just because he likes me because he would give me a little bit of time anyway because he likes me. He gives me a load of time. He shows me how he runs his team. He shows me all the successes so I can skip to him. He shows me all the failures so I can skip over them. 
because there's a financial incentive. If I win, he wins. If I make money, he makes money. That is the big difference, right? Number two, I don't know if we touched on, did we touch on icon status at all? Did you get into that here? Icon status is when you do, and it depends on market to market. I'm not going to get into the details, but it's roughly 28 to 30 deals, which is what any agent should be shooting for. Boom, you get $16,000 in stock. So I did the math for someone the other day, and I said, if you're not there yet, our job is to get you there. That's where we want to get you. And when you do the math of, okay, I had to pay 16 grand in, but then I got this back, but then I got fees. and then I got, You do all the math at roughly 30 deals, it's costing you two to $210 a transaction. That's what it's costing you to work here. So if you're like, oh, I'm going to go work at a hundred percent place, a hundred percent commission brokerage is not a hundred percent. They've got fees, right? So yeah, you get a hundred percent, but then they subtract the fees. They call themselves a hundred percent. Great marketing pitch. But after the fees, they're not 100%. So the question is, can you do 30 deals in a year? And if you can, are you paying them more than $200 a transaction? Because if you are, we're cheaper, right? And the more deals you do past 30, the cheaper it becomes. It starts to dip below $200 a deal. So I think that was imp uh, really important too to notate. Yeah, and uh, really, thank you for bringing that up. And, and a little thing around the stock, and this is just kind of ownership. How did the guy who was the janitor at Google end up a millionaire? Yep. He got stock. He worked for minimum wage in Silicon Valley, which is, you know, he scrapped it around. But that person, the, the little old lady, I, I had someone that I sold um, and, and helped them sell a house. She worked at Walmart. She started there uh, like 35 years ago. She's a multimillionaire. How does that feel? From stock. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm not, I'm not bullshit. It's true. So, anyway, so people say, well, when I, especially when I went to EXP, oh, it's going to go to zero. No, no, no. Okay. All I can tell you is you're not giving me any stock that potentially can go to zero. So yeah. let's just stop the conversation right there. And I'm getting a lower split. And I get some alignment with people that are going to help me with my business. Because guess what? I used to go in there and I thought it was going to be every, like to Joe's point, it was going to be like, yeah, I got some friends and, you know, we're going to collaborate and we're all part of the same company. No. I was actually the guy that everybody was coming to, which is fine because I don't mind, but also my time, right? So, like, my time is valuable. This is, you know, I got to take care of my little girl who's, you know, on various photos around here. You know, that's what drives me, Joe's page. Like, what happens if Joe gets whacked by a bus? We don't want to talk about that, but shit happens. Is anything there for them? Is there a revenue stream, which is willable, by the way, willable, can go to um, his family? You leave a legacy. So if you care about your family, if you care about your future, if you want to create financial freedom and you want some people to help you do that, reach out to us because yep. we'd be happy to talk. So I think that about wraps it up, my man. You got anything else you want to say? No, I'll just say this. You know, you had asked for, uh, earlier, why would anybody want to work with a company where they don't own a portion of that company? And I, I really do think, if I think about why I wouldn't do that, it'd be fear of the unknown, right? Fear of change, mm -hmm. a lot of fear. And that's understandable, man. We all have fear. I have fear. Alex has fear. We all have fear. And it does take a little bit of digging. We are just scratching the surface. There's so much to this. So many great questions beyond what we're able to answer, answer in such a short amount of time. But I would say this, if you're serious about your business and not just DXP, man, every year or two, you should be going around talking to the major brokerages, asking these questions to make sure that you're set up for success. I've told other brokers, guys, call my guys, pitch them on whatever yeah. company you're with. I don't care. They should be at the best place. If yeah. I'm pitching EXP, EXP better be the best. And the day it's not is the day that I go somewhere else. So I am welcoming other brokers to contact my agents and give them your pitch because I think EXP is the best and it's not even close. But to know that, to feel confident with that, I had to invest the time and sit down and talk to these guys and fully understand it. But that is my job. That's my responsibility as a business owner, not only to myself, but to my family and to all the agents who are working with me. Yeah, that's spot on, man. And I, you know, I've had agents uh, and team leaders rip on me for talking to their agents and like, well, I'm going to call your agents. I'm like, yeah, I, that, oh, they're not, first of all, they're not my agents. Yep. They're human beings 
Yes. That have decided to align yes. with me in a common goal to better our lives and, you know, financially better our lives as well, which is going to yeah. help us with our future. You know, you yeah. make money now, it's stored energy for the future. And, uh, you know, people get really bent out of shape. And at the end of the day, I love what Joe says. Hey, if I'm not, the, if I'm not, Glenn, Glenn Sanford, I love it. This, we'll leave you on this. His philosophy was make this company so great that no one would want to ever leave. Yep. That is the mantra. So he is continuously buying Success Magazine, owning Verbella. There's a lot of other things in the work. I mean, there's other affiliations that we have that offer opportunities for the agents to better themselves financially and um, as an individual. So it's just, it, it, there's a lot of layers to it, but at the end of the day, it makes fiscally, it makes a good, you know, I love Carlos as German. Uh, I don't want to say it, but you know, people are being fiscally irresponsible. It's fiscally irresponsible not to work at EXP. It yeah. kind of is. You know what I mean? Like you're just holding on to fear because of unknown, but really, guess what? They're really, it's nothing different. And guess yeah. what? Nobody cares about your brand. I'm going to just say it. Nobody cares about your franchise or your, or your location. Yeah. Nobody cares. Nope. Nobody cares. They care about how is Joe Rosen treating them. That's what they care about. They care is, you know, because guess what, guys? They go on MLS. It goes on to Realtor.com. It goes on to Zillow. It goes on to Homes.com. We do some drone. We do some beautiful photos, virtual tours, set up showings. Get over it. You, you're not doing really anything, especially in a market like this, which is a different story. But you know what I mean? Like you're not really doing anything special that any other agent couldn't do. It's your brand. What kind of value do you bring? Yeah. Not your franchise. That franchise, people could care less. They only care if you make it like that. Well, they ask me where do we have a location? They ask me yeah. if you know who am I with? Yeah, so what? I bring up that I'm with EXP. I show up like this. I'm polished. We call them before. You know what I mean? They, they're like, oh, this person's polished. They get bent out of shape because they don't necessarily put in the work to retain the agents. All good things take effort. Monique, boom, bringing the heat at the end. I love it. Um, it's so true. You know, they just don't care about your uh, the company that you're with. They care about how much you care about them yep. and what you're going to do for them. Because guess what? Your company doesn't do anything extra. And you guys know that. You know that. So anything else you want to leave it on, Joe? No, man. I appreciate it. I love the positivity. Uh, again, everything I talked about in my section, it's all free, guys. Execute it, and it will work for you. And if you don't, it won't work, just like anything else you don't execute on. But I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate your alignment, brother. Thank you. Have a great day, guys.